Hey everyone, Mike here. Guess what time it is? It's base time, not... Whoa, I don't know where that came from. Uh, base time, non-fish. So check out the video coming up here on the new Suncoast BC3 XL stereo bass preamp. Um, first on this video, I'm just doing the channel two part of the review so you can hear what the clean does and then I'm gonna do another video on um, the first channel with the distortion coming up after that. Thanks. That is the Suncoast BC3 XL. Really great preamp. I'm gonna be doing a bunch of videos expanded into different things. Um, I'm gonna try and turn this mic off when I do sound changes, uh, you know, on and off. Sometimes I'll leave it on, but just to give you a general idea of what the tone controls do, what this unit does. Um, one of the things with me on uh, on bass stuff, starting way back, I was you know a hi-fi guy and a pro sound engineer, and you know I get it. There's cats that just oh man, all you need is a precision plug into an Ampeg, you're done. Great, that stuff sounds great. It's been done. There's people that do that. There's guys that sound great. This can range forever. You know, like in choosing pizza sometimes. I so. You know this can go on and on so what i'm going to show you here is one of the things i like about using a thing like suncoast is it it has basic features but it can really stretch out so if you're a real basic person it just wants i want bass mid treble just change the tone turn it on this will do it you want to start getting deeper you can start playing with the drive control and if you get bored with the thing or you're looking for different tones you start stretching out and changing that drive input, it flips the characteristic around, but it's not a character knob. That's one of the things when I, I, I had to give up my Pierce rig when I tore my bicep in 2013. If somebody said, you know, if, if you won Lotto, what baser could you buy? I'm like, well, I'd just hire someone to move my Pierce rig, you know, because I had the crown and four tens. But I had to go pedal board, and when I went pedal board, uh, I'm going to do a, you know, a, a video on that, on how I got to Sun Coast, where I came from with the Pierce. So you're gonna look for that in another video. Um, but in, in this situation, when I was messing with pedal boards, I was combining all these funky gadgets and whatnot just to try and get my old Pierce tone. And then I tripped across, you know, Sun Coast. Um, so I was really excited because it was, it was basically somebody crammed a Pierce preamp into a pedal, which would be Jim Sakura. He's the guy. Anyways, moving on from here, I want to show you the features. It's, it's basically, it's got three channels, okay? It's got different modes. But we're going to use it right now in what we call channel switching. Channel switching will take me from channel two, channel one. When channel one is on, you can add this overdrive feature, okay? only with channel one. So when you flip to channel two, it's just channel two. So there's there's one real nice flexibility. You can play different types of basses, fretless, or more uh, active pickup versus non-active, and you're at gigs. It has, why he calls it a stereo preamp, and this gets deep, two inputs, two outputs, and they can be summed by a button up here, which is really great. So if you're just a mono in-out guy like myself, you could sum it you could send this output with it summed out to something else, right? I do that with my in-ear rig. I split this out. I come in with one bass. Now for the dual pickup guys, the Billy Sheehan Attitude basses, I mean, that, that thing is amazing. Um, I played one of those basses. I don't have it. I, all my basses are custom made with Alembic pickups. So I'm gonna, this bass, I'm gonna just kind of dial in, not completely what I use in tone, uh, I'm just going to roll the tone back and use just the neck pickup for now just to kind of give you that Fender Precision general mid-range bass sound because this thing gets crazy uh, just with two volumes, two tones and the active deal. So I'm going to just try and run it straight out. So I'll shut off my, uh, my bridge and I have the knob swapped. So the bridge is going to turn off. I'm going to center the... the uh, the neck pickup tone. So you just basically have that. Right now the mic's still on. Um, so what I want to show you is, if we go to channel two, 
you have a base feature here at 50, uh, 50 cycles, which is a really nice for bottom end. I'm gonna just kind of keep everything uh, centered up. And for now, I'll leave the mic on. I gotta keep an eye on my interface so I'm not slamming it. But I'm gonna lump up the bottom end just for fun. I'll leave the drive in about, you know, in the middle area. I'm not pushing hard. Now I'm gonna back my volume down because I'm starting to hit the uh, hit the interface too much. But man, this can go big heavy, like reggae crazy heavy. I don't even have the limiter in. I'll get to that. So. I can bring the bass knob back. I would give it a little level back up now. Let's take the mid-range for a little ride. You got 70 cycles to 2K, right? So let me whale it up to 2K. And I'm gonna crank it. I'm gonna leave the mic on so I can still talk to you right now so we're not getting crazy. I mean, I can turn the mic off. Okay, mic's back on. All right, so I'm gonna sweep it. This is cranked mid-range. So was, I'm trying to show you as if you were sitting here turning the turning the knob. Really nice range. Now, let's cut it, because there's a lot of guys out there like, ah, get rid of that 500. Okay, so we're taking out a lot, so we lost some gain. We're taking out 70. Right? I mean, we're doing a drastic, we're, we're way down at the bottom here. This is at 50, though, because you still get some of that bottom in there. It's coming in under that 70. But you, so you still got... You know, it's kind of crazy there pulling 70 out but it's it's doable you might have a five string or something of that nature that something going on around there all right so i'm going to leave it on a cut mode and just clank at the string here and give it a little more level so you can hear it Guys are like, yeah. There's, there's, you know, some, some guys like that upper top, kind of ride the bottom along. That's real drastic. So you could probably do the old bring it around 300, bring it around five. Still might be a little too much for some guys. I got these Olympic low ends, moderate. Yet still get kind of lumpy. I'm not doing any fancy playing here, guys. So, all right, let's bring the bottom end back. Just all right. So we're at 600. We're at full cut. Bring it back up. There's a 1K cut. I'm gonna shut the mic off because you're probably hearing. Okay, I put the mic back on. So we're at 1K. Here's 2K. I killed the killed the mic again. Okay, got the mic back on. Okay, so that's, here's your sweep. I'll still, I'll just give it a round on the G string for you. All right, we'll 
flat nav back down and I'll take you on the treble tour. All right, I'm gonna cut the treble. I'll shut the mic off because it picks up my. Bring the treble up. Shut the mic off. Might be a little Chris Choir. Top end in there for you if you need it. Um, or just any kind of top end you're looking for. So here's here's your basics of your preamp, right? So now the next wild thing will start flat again. The drive control, right? Most of you guys may know this. Some people are beginners, whatever. I'm going to bring the drive control up to start changing kind of the characteristics of the sound of this pedal. It's a little meatier, a little grittier. I didn't even touch the tones really, so try and watch, try and keep my levels matched. keeping an eye on the meter so I'm trying to give you the same output because it'll fool your ears if I if the level change by a little bit so what I'll do is back the volume down bring the drive up it's just gonna relatively bring some of that out well watch I'll start pushing the input of this didn't even touch uh, the EQing so it brought out a little more bite into the thing. No fancy playing here today. Right? So that's what the drive sitting here around eight without the boost knob on. Now, you know, these are some of Jim's little tricks. So I'll take the volume down, put the boost on, which is like turbo. Sanity tone. I left. I left it at the same. You know, I just made up for the game. Now there might work for some people for a certain part of a song. We want some of that going on. We want to calm it down, right? kind of want that distortion in there so it's a, like a kind of a breakup warming up a little with some bottom you cut all the trouble you kind of sit back in the mix I'm just totally stretching out to like all kinds of tones because sometimes you listen to some people's recordings you know like, what are you using that in a bass tone and then you find out there's stuff like that going on blended into the into the mix some guys out there who in their right mind would use stuff like that listen it's an open field out there that's the beauty of our music right is having this flexibility of tone to me there's no written scriptures there's some general baselines, you know, uh, uh, guidelines for the music, right? You know, it's kind of like construction. 
you kind of got an idea how, how a building or a house is made. You're not going to put the roof first and then build the thing upside down, right? So we, we're going to have building blocks of all kinds of things, and that's what's great about having this flexibility. So that's what the boost up. So the other thing you could do is still keep it in that type of characteristic. Just take the drive down. Don't make it as excessive, and you get a little different kind of bite out of it now. going to keep noodling around making sounds and stuff not getting into this impressive bass playing stuff it's not part of this i want you guys to hear strikes right bring the drive down more bring some volume back up boost off we're gonna drive in a little bit again and it got totally cleaned up bring the mids back in if I want all right so that's not even touching the limiter if I bring it up for like kind of a I don't know what I've been using for a rock tone kind of thing. I think I usually have it about here. And for me, I use both pickups. So I kind of just dialed in a similar tone that I use. Let's put the limiter in. So here's a nice, easy limiter. Kind of brings it all in, right? Gives it that little... the mic off. Alright, so I put the mic back on. I could back down the limiter. Alright, here's the limiter out. It's bringing it all back. Gotta watch my level again. Get 
get lost with that level on that. Uh. All right, let's get that light to pop. Watch. All right, here we go. You kind of feel the sustain come in. sit in the mix nice pop a little limiter in there real easy limiter you don't have to fight with it all night you just kind of get your input and output going on if you put the volume in right you're gonna start hammering the limiter obviously a lot more so you find your happy medium there right that's that's crushed all the way in. But you can hear the whole bass kind of come in together. It's, it's, it's real smooth and musical. Of course, when you turn it off, and everything runs wild and then you can say oh it seems to sound better without it well it depends you gotta you gotta use it see i kind of brought the levels back down because the limiter was cutting them bring it in push into the limiter Sometimes with the trick on a limiter, you readjust your EQ a little bit, so you get this compromise on stuff, and it works really nice. So you get all kinds of cool stuff with the limiter. Alright, so that is just channel 2. So I'm going to do another section on the other part, channel 1 and the overdrive. All right, thanks again for watching another episode of Bass Time Non Fish. And um, if you're looking for maybe other pedal reviews, uh, try and get some people on here, some of my bass buddies and all the other madness going on. So check it out. And uh, Bass Time Non Fish was filmed in front of a live audience. Yes, a live audience. So see you guys soon. Thanks again.